God damn it. So in this video, I thought we could build an old AMD PC for gaming comfortably in 1440p, streaming as well as editing. I have yet to do a black and gold build on the channel, so that is what the color scheme will be of this PC. Let's get started. Join the custom cooling revolution with the Corsair Hydro X series, featuring every part you'll need to make your PC stand out with a gorgeous custom cooling system. Experience powerful cooling with minimal noise, easy setup, and automated control for efficient fan and pump speeds. Choose from a range of water blocks for the latest graphics cards, including the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti. For more info, click the link below. All right, so in this build, we are going with none other than the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X. This is currently the best 8-core, 16-thread CPU you can buy right now from AMD. And of course, we're going to overclock it, so we do need a solid AIO to get the job done. I decided to go with the Master Liquid ML240R this time around, but I think I'm going to swap the fans for the Corsair ones just because I like the setup process and the software uh, from Corsair a lot better than these. No offense to you guys at Cooler Master. Uh, the motherboard we're going with actually is perfect for this build for several reasons. It has all the bells and whistles you can expect from a high-end motherboard. It has two 8-pin APC connectors, which is going to help out for a stable and smooth overclock. It's got built-in Wi-Fi and PCI Gen 4 support. We're actually going to be going with the MP600 from Corsair. This is a 1TB NVMe PCIe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. So we're going to take advantage of these incredible read and write speeds on the X570 chipset. Check this out guys, almost half a gigabyte per second read and up to 40 to 50 megabytes per second write. That is insanely fast, but of course I'm gonna test out the speeds after the system is done to see if these numbers are even accurate. Another really cool feature of this board is the extended heat pipe design, which runs across the MOS heatsinks to the chipset heatsink, which helps with thermal dissipation. But what sets this board apart from other competitors like Asus, Gigabyte, and even ASRock is the placement of their chipset fan. Have you guys even noticed that on almost all the other motherboard manufacturers, the chipset fan is located right near the top PCI slot? And what usually goes on the top PCI slot? I'll give you guys a hint. The first three letters start with GPU. So when you plug in your GPU, you're automatically covering the fan, which then restricts the airflow. But MSI's design team caught this flaw and repositioned their fans closer to the bottom so that the GPU doesn't interfere with the airflow. In order to game comfortably in 1440p, I went with the 5700 XT, which also has the best value. But I did pick up the Evoke from MSI because, well, obviously it's in gold. I can't think of any other RAM in the world that would fit perfectly in this build other than the G-Skill Trident Z Royale. So we're just gonna toss in all 32 gigs of these beauties in here. And powering the system is a 750 watt power supply from Cooler Master. And finally, everything is going inside the MSI MPG Sakura 500G. I didn't even know MSI made cases until this arrived at the office last week, to be honest. So this is a full ATX chassis with tempered glass panels on a hinge on both sides. It also has two massive 200 millimeter fans in the front for intake and an extractable bracket that supports up to a 360 millimeter radiator. Oh, I almost forgot about the cables. Of course, we gotta spice it up with some custom cables from Cable Mod. They did add some new aluminum cable combs, so I went with the gold ones, which I think is gonna look really good in the build. Honestly, it looks really good in my mind, but I can finish the build and then it could look like a pile of turds. So you, uh, you never really know with these things until it's done. But anyways, let's begin. All right, so obviously the first thing to do is test out all the components, make sure everything is functioning before you throw it inside the case because there are times where something can be defective and it becomes pretty difficult to diagnose. So it's better to have all the components outside of the case. I've learned that from my past mistakes. But anyways, everything is hooked up here. Now I'm gonna show you guys a really cool trick where you can turn on your system without a physical power button. You can boot your system using a screwdriver or any pointy metal piece. So what you have to do is Find a connector on the motherboard labeled JFP1, and what you're gonna do is use the tip of your screwdriver or whatever metal piece you're using and touch the third and fourth pins on the top row, just like this. Just like that, it turns on. And obviously what we're looking for is post or booting to BIOS. There we go. All right, so we're officially in BIOS, which means we are golden. 
that was good. Come on, that was good. Get it because it's a black and gold build. All right, I'll just I'll just delete my channel. All right, let's go ahead and install storage. One terabyte is plenty to download and benchmark all the games. Just like that, okay. You know, I wish there was more gold accents inside the case. Maybe the grommets could have been gold or the PCI brackets here. I feel like it's just too much black. Don't need this hard drive cage. I'm not using any hard drives also. Um, it's gonna look a lot cleaner without this here. Oh, it just slides right off, nice. I guess technically we don't need this SSD tray here too. Might as well just get everything out of here that we are not gonna use. I love the fact that there are uh, grommets down here for cable management. We got three over here on this side. So it's gonna look really clean at the end. So now I guess now we can put on the cooler. So let's grab that real quick. I absolutely love the fact that you can remove the top radiator bracket. You can slap on the radiator and then insert it back in. This is super convenient. Oh no, these are gonna throw off the color scheme. Oh, did not pay attention to that. This can't do guys, I cannot use those fans. I'm gonna have to use the LL fans actually. Yep, these will do. All right, so the fans are now installed. Now we gotta hook it up to this bracket over here. So, all right, let's test it out real quick. Make sure there's plenty of space. So slide this back in. Uh, yeah, looks like there is plenty of space actually for the rear fan and the tubing. So plenty of clearance. They are not gonna interfere. This is actually perfect. Actually, while we're at it, let's hook up the CPU cables. Why not? Oh my God, I love these grommets up here. Seriously. Perfect. Oh, these cable combs are sweet. All right, let's plug another one. Oh my God, looks nice. All right, I guess we can do the cooler now. So let's slide this back in. Oh my God, look how easy that was. That's just, can't get over it, honestly. All right, now for this part. Let's peel this off. I'll make the same mistake like last time. 32 gigs of these bad boys. All right, two, three, and four. Oh my God, this build is coming together nicely. All right, tell me those are the sexiest RAM sticks you've ever seen, guys. So we're gonna be installing the GPU vertically, so that means we're gonna have to install the vertical mount. Um, we're also gonna install a PCI 16 extension build. Now, I don't know who's wrong here, Corsair or MSI, because the standoffs over here don't align with the extension cable. But for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna install one anyways. One screw should hold it up for now. All right, so I ran into another issue trying to install the GPU to the vertical bracket. So the GPU sits on the bracket like this. How on earth are you gonna tighten it? This top portion over here is gonna block your screwdriver. So how on earth are you gonna fit a screwdriver in there to tighten the GPU. Like, see how my screwdriver is at an angle? Because the top portion is not letting me keep it straight or perpendicular. I guess you're supposed to tighten it at an angle. That is, that is horrible design. Whatever, this will do for now. All right, so the build is done and it's not quite 
what I expected. I'll talk more about that at the end of this video. But first, let's talk about the performance because that is pretty much the only thing I'm happy about. For starters, the system is insanely fast. It took less than a minute, around 45 seconds actually, to install Windows 10 Pro files onto the M.2 SSD. I was also getting advertised read and write speeds, almost half a gigabyte per second read and write. Of course, this will impact gaming by a lot, not only starting up the games, but also loading into them, whether it's save data for campaign or multiplayer matches when you have to load maps. I'm sure we have all seen that one dude from planet Jupiter who takes forever to load in the game. For gaming, the 5700 XT does great just as I expected. I'm able to game comfortably over 100 FPS and 1440p with max settings. The only two games I benchmarked um, are Apex Legends and Siege, which is pretty much the only games I play right now. And I'm getting over 100 FPS on Apex and easily over 200 FPS on Rainbow Six Siege. Temps are also really good. The two massive 200 millimeter fans in the front do a good job pulling in lots of fresh air for the case. And the three exhaust fans remove the hot air, keeping the airflow positive. But that's not all when it comes to cooling. The chipset fan also does a good job keeping the components on the motherboard nice and cool, especially the VRMs. MSI is calling it Frozer technology. Basically, the fan kicks on if additional cooling is needed from the chipset. And if the PC is on idle or the temps don't get that high, the fan does shut off automatically, eliminating any excess noise. You can even configure a fan curve for the chipset through the BIOS if you want. All right, performance aside, let's talk about the aesthetics of this system because I am not 100% satisfied. And don't get me wrong, guys, this is a clean, beautiful looking PC. But deep down, I'm just, I know I could do better. Um, I do want to talk about the case first. I will say this, it's a great looking case with lots of expandability. I love the hinge design for both tempered glass panels and it has lots of support for cable management. But it does have some minor flaws. The vertical mounting situation was a complete mess, installation was difficult, and the standoffs aren't compatible with all PCI 16 extension belts. So that's why I decided to mount the GPU the normal way. And finally, my last suggestion would be to maybe include some sort of covers for this area of the case. Since the other side is also tempered glass, you can see right through your PC. I mean, it's fine if you're doing a water-cooled build because the reservoir would normally sit here, but if you're not doing one, then there's nothing going on over here and it just looks weird. But I don't know guys, I'm just ranting at this point and nitpicking small things that might not matter to you, but it does matter to me. You know, I've been building PCs over 15 years now, so when I see small things like this, I tend to question it. Um, <laughs> but what I really want to do with this system is I want to mod it because I'm not really happy with the aesthetics portion. Performance is awesome, aesthetically, you know, for me, I feel like I could do so much better. So I want to custom paint some parts, some components in there, as well as some parts of the case to really add some gold in there. I also want to repaint the GPU because the gold is a different shade um, compared to the other gold inside. It's kind of, ha it has this pale faded gold, which I'm not happy with, but that is up to you guys. Uh, if this video gets, I guess, 6,000 likes, I will add that to my to-do list. But anyways, I'll drop a link to all the parts used in the build down below if you guys want to check it out. Thanks again so much for watching. As always, I will see you very soon in the next video.